tonight remembering a president and a patriot. George Herbert Walker Bush was America's last great soldier statesman. A farewell filled with tears, laughter. The man couldn't stomach vegetables, <laughs> especially broccoli. And a lot of love. And the last words he would ever say on earth were, I love you too. Tonight, the nation says goodbye to President George H.W. Bush. We give you a live look right now at Ellington Air Force Base, Houston, Texas, where President Bush's body is expected to arrive in just about 30 minutes. Private funeral services for the 41st president will be held tomorrow. Today's services highlighted President Bush's service, his strength, and of course his love for his family and friends. Good evening to you. I'm David Wade. I'm Lisa Hughes. The National Cathedral was packed today with thousands of people, including dignitaries from all over the world, who came to say goodbye to former President Bush. And a touching moment earlier today when the hearse carrying the president's casket past the White House one last time. WVZ anchor Liam Martin starts our coverage tonight. He is live in Washington, D.C. with more on today's tribute. Liam? Well, David and Lisa, certainly the most poignant moment today was the son's eulogy to his father. George W. Bush described his dad as, quote, the brightest of a thousand points of light. He delivered just one of four eulogies here today, all of which reflected on the former president as a decent man, a noble man, a gentle man who also served his country in combat. With a 21-gun salute, the Bush family gathered, hands on heart, as the casket began its journey to Washington's National Cathedral. <laughs> President Trump and the First Lady joined three former presidents and their wives to pay final respects to George Herbert Walker Bush. A fourth former president, George W. Bush, delivered a eulogy for his father, full of humor. He was born with just two settings, full throttle, then sleep. <laughs> and affection. Let us know the blessings of knowing and loving you, a great and noble man, the best father a son or daughter could have. And in our grief, let us smile knowing that dad is hugging Robin and holding mom's hand again. Canada's former prime minister remembered the elder Bush's contribution to the nation and complimented his leadership. Every single head of government in the world knew that they were dealing with a gentleman, a genuine leader, one who was distinguished, resolute, and brave. Former Senator Alan Simpson was one of President Bush's oldest friends and remembered him as a man of rare character. Those who travel the high road of humility in Washington, D.C. are not bothered by heavy traffic. <laughs> Occasionally when he was president, he would come back to the House of Representatives where he had served mm -hmm. and come in and play handball, play paddleball, and then just hang around with us. Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey attended the state funeral today. He was serving in the House when Bush 41 was president. He did it in a way in which you could have a big political fight but still be friends the next day. That's just who he was, and I think that's what is really missed today mm -hmm. in American politics. President Bush will now be buried on the grounds of his presidential library in College Station, Texas. He'll be laid to rest next to his wife, Barbara, who passed away earlier this year, and their daughter, Robin, who died at the age of three. Well, former President Bush is now on his way to Houston, Texas, where at 545 tonight, a service will be held at St. Martin's Episcopal Church, the Bush Family Church in Houston, before President Bush then lies in repose until tomorrow morning.